Hi everybody, my name is Daniela and I make videos about the cultural history behind the paintings that I create and then efforts to um, bring cultural knowledge and cultural awareness to art from different parts of the world. Um, my art is specifically um, dealing with my Ecuadorian culture right now. Today I will be sharing a story behind um, the Rio Bambenian devil and or the Supai as it's known in its Quechua name and um, a couple of the mysteries and the things that I know currently know about it. I'll start off with um, the story of the first time that I saw one which was back in 2011. I was with my family visiting my great aunt. It was the afternoon in December and um, we heard some noise outside so we decided to go out and see what was going on. Um, this was the first time I was seeing the impromptu parades that they have in Ecuador. Well in Riobamba specifically it's now a cultural patrimony of the city of Riobamba because they are so unique and we saw like these groups of dancers and my sister took out her camera and she started to get into the um to the middle of the road to take pictures of these um characters dressed in red with these tin masks and just dancing around right <laughs> little did she know that um the four or five guys that were there um, started to dance around her and then started to corner her to the side of the house it was so so like unexpected and bizarre and she didn't know what to do she was trying to take pictures while they were dancing but they're sort, sort of getting into her face and i was just laughing because <laughs> i couldn't believe what was going on and later i um i made another series of paintings but i came back to this character because it's so unique to the uh, indigenous mestizo culture of where I'm from. And uh, I asked my father who was a musicologist and um, a historian about what they meant and I started making paintings about them. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I discovered or that I learned was that this character is very secular within the indigenous community. It um, was supposed to be a spiritual um, being was to determine who was to become a uh, musician or creative um, person, follow a creative career within the community. The belief was that if they put their um, instrument on the ledge of a um, mountain, left it overnight, um, if the supai blessed the person to become a um, crafter weaver uh, or musician in whatever instrument that they chose if the instrument was in tune the next day which means that it was like all um ready to play and if you're a musician you know what i'm talking about um if that happened then the person was meant to become a musician without within the community if the instrument wasn't in tune uh the next day then that meant that the person wasn't destined to become a creative person and I really connect to this because of course I'm creative and one of my um one of my college friends told me that I should make the soup I a like um my spiritual animal or something like that but I don't want it to be like gimmicky I'm more interested in the history behind it and the cultural aspect of it anyway um there's also an obvious but very mysterious overlap within this character and its religious uh, connections because it is called the devil even though it is a spiritual um, figure within the, the cosmology of um, the indigenous people. Um, the reason I say that there's an overlap is because um, in the dress attire, the costume that they wear I don't know if how recent this is, but I've seen it in all of the times that I've encountered the character, well, mostly. Um, 
that they wear symbols of religious symbols like crosses or um, pictures of the baby Jesus on the front of the scarf that they wear and you know while they dance or like little symbols of like saints or stuff and there's an overlap but I also believe that it's more of like the overlap of religion within the um, indigenous community which is due to the colonization and you know the input of the Christian religion within the community how far back that goes back I don't know um, this is an oral tradition passed down from generation to generation within the Kichwa community and there's not very much written down and me for one uh, I'm not fluent in Kichwa at all my grandmother never taught us uh, never taught my mom and thus my mom never taught me third mystery behind this is um the fact that there is an overlap or combination of um, feminine and masculine energies within that specific character because it um, embodies both feminine and masculine qualities within the costume. It um, has this big braid made out of uh, kabuya, which is a um, it's a fiber plant, um, natural plant that grows in, in Riobamba, in the mountain area. And they have like these scarves, which are always really colorful. Um, they're like two scarves that they wrap around their waists. And or they, um, they have a lot of sequins on them. And so that's one aspect. And also like the, um, the mask itself, has like the goatee which is also very masculine and he's always wearing a tie nowadays uh, women also dress in this character and i believe that it's more of this um combination of how we are both feminine and masculine uh, we both have feminine and masculine qualities that spiritual beings are neither masculine or feminine but that's still up to debate and uh it's one of the things that i want to uncover Thank you for sticking around. I hope you liked learning about the history and mysteries behind the Supai character. And if you would like to see more videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you're notified when I upload. Um, if you would like to support my channel and my art practice, and specifically this um, series that I'm making, don't forget to um, go to the donations page. If you would like to um, commission a piece, um, my commissions link is also at the bottom in the description. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. If you guys have any questions, also write those down there. Leave me your comments, stories, introduce yourselves. I love to hear what you guys have to say and I wish you the best. I love you and take care.